Phaser here, Pixel Out Info, here with uh, Gary M from Autodesk. Gonna show us uh, some cool stuff with Maya, or, sorry, Max 2013. We're gonna look at some of the unit convergence stuff and a couple other key highlight points that are new to uh, Max 2013. Take it away, Gary. Thanks. Yeah. So the first thing is, is uh, just to talk a little bit about uh, unit conversion between different applications. And one of the things I'm gonna do right here is just import an STL model. So this is not a native file format to Max. Max, 3ds Max has the ability to bring in lots of different file formats, but in this case, I'm bringing in a, a model that was done in an external application, and I believe you said it was done in Maya. So I'm going to bring this model in using an STL file format, and when I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and use all the default settings here and just kind of bring this in. So we land, you know, it lands in nice and clean. Our geometry is, the topology is great, and it's nice and clean. But one of the first things that I want to do inside of 3ds Max is check that the scale is going to be properly converted. And the reason I do that is for a number of reasons. Um, with the newer releases of Max, there's a lot of things that are based around the physical real world, the new Mass Effects physics engine. There's uh, lighting calculations that are done in, in a renderer called iRay that are physically based in the real world. There's also um, some material settings that are based in the real world, also lighting things that are based. So if you're working in a real world scale, all of those tools are gonna be good to go and you're gonna get like photographically you know, accurate work and photometrically accurate work. So what I'm gonna do is check this by going into the max unit setup and I just wanna check that my system units are working and, and there's no right or wrong to this. I just wanna kinda check what I'm working with. Personally, I'm gonna change this to working in inches because that's the default in Max and it's just kind of the way that my brain works. But you can work in any number of um, millimeters, centimeters, and even things like kilometers. So if you were working with a system unit in kilometers, that might be useful for something like outer space models or something really big. And down here at millimeters might be something, if, if your Max scene is only ever gonna be like jewelry design or something very small, you might wanna work with system units that are millimeters. Inches is kind of like a middle of the ground. It's the default, and I'm just going to use it because it's the way my brain is kind of hardwired to think. So I'm going to work in inches as the system units, and then the display units I'm also going to change to be feet with fractional inches. So now that I've got this set up the way that I like to work, I didn't change any attributes about the model, but what I can then do as a quick check of how, how big things are is I'm just going to create a default primitive cube roughly the same size as my model, and then over here on the right, I'm going to actually check those values. And here you can see that my cube is about two inches wide. So this is, in fact, a, a really small model as Max sees it in the real world. So if I were to say, you know, I want to model this as a real world size motorcycle, and I'm, I'm not a motorcycle expert, but I'm just going to like kind of rock these values back and forth and say, all right, that's the value right there that I want to be, and again, I'm guessing just real world values here, about three feet. So I can enter that in. Now I'm going to say, what is the width of this, or the length of this uh, motorcycle? And I'm going to make that about seven feet. And again, I'm just guessing. The height, I'm going to make about three feet. So once I do that, and I zoom out my scene, you can see that I've got this really, it's a much larger box. So you see our motorcycle is really small down here in the viewport. And our, what we need to do is scale that up to fit this box to be based in the real world. Well, one common mistake about doing this is if you just to grab this model and scale it up, what you're going to be doing, and that's, there's nothing wrong with scaling, but by doing that, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but this is a dialogue that's showing me the actual scale of this geometry. And what we don't want is a resulting model that's been scaled up to like 700 or 800 percent. And let me just do it again, like to get this thing, whoops, to get this thing to the proper scale, it would be roughly, I don't know, 1300 percent. Now we don't, there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. One thing you could do is actually just scale it up to fit this, this correct size. I want to reset the transformation for scale. Now watch this, this dialog right now thinks that the model has been scaled up 1400%. If I reset the transformation here, now this motorcycle model, it just kind of reset what it thinks the size of this model is. So that's one way to do it. And I'm going to undo those changes and show you another way that you can do this. What I can do is, if this is an imported model, I can go to the sub-object level and select all of the vertices or the polygons or, or any of the sub-object components. I just happen to use vertices. And then I can actually say, let's scale these vertices around a common point. Now I'm not scaling the model, I'm scaling the components of the model. And when I release this mouse and exit out of sub-object mode, you can see that the model is maintained a 100% scale value. So that's a little bit of a you know little voodoo under the hood of yeah. how Max can work 
with the scale right at the beginning of your project. And it's really important to be, it's not, it's not critical for all projects. Like if I'm just going to spin a logo, there's no point in making it 10 feet long or two inches long or whatever. It's just text. But if I'm working in things based around the real world, like photographic work for architecture or product design or industrial design or game development or anything that's based in the real world, then it really pays to, to, to do that. Cool, man. Thanks for showing us a bunch of the awesome new features in yeah, Max 2013. Andrew with uh, Pixel. Here with uh, Gary. Check him out. Uh, I think you run some of the um, area TV stuff too, don't you? Yeah. I've got a blog at the area. Okay, cool. Check it out. Definitely check it out. Uh, thanks, Gary. Thanks, man. Bunch, man. Good to talk to you. Thanks.